Hello my soccer universe. I literally had just put the video, the season kappa for Austria and Germany to upload and the bomb shell broke loose and honestly I don't understand my club. I don't understand my club. After 30 years of being a fan, I still don't understand this club. Why they always have a tendency to make a big storm out of nothing instead of addressing the big storms to come. And I actually should say I don't understand my clubs, but the situation with Maldini being fired at Milan is something that I will actually talk about in uh, the last review video for the Serie A season. I have my thoughts on that one as well. Just uh, a little preview. I don't think you can fire a legend, but you know, I, I have to also look into other things. But what I'm talking about is here, as I said, I just had posted, I was done, everything, I check on the phone, Coach Kuba was sacked by Lusk. After one of the best seasons in the history of the club, to be replaced with, a th with 39 year old Thomas Sageda, uh, who was the co-trainer at Liefering, second division, mid-table. Yes, he has a little bit better resume as well. He was also a co-trainer for Oliver Glasner on two occasions. And he was a, uh, also the coach for a, a relatively successful season, although I have to ask my, uh, uh, my co-worker for that um, at Blauweiss Linz. It's not the greatest resume, but what I hear is he is very much a maniac uh, for the game and uh, hard worker and prefers a very intense style of play, which, yes, is what Lusk would want to have, because this is how Lusk became a really, really good team. However, the sacking of Coach Kubauer, on the face of it, does not make much sense. When he was hired a year ago, I made a video where I was equally puzzled and I, not because of his track record, but because I thought that he does not fit Lusk. Because he, there were so many scuffles between uh, the Lusk leadership and him when he was a rapid coach that it did not work out. And I think I echoed very much what much of the fan base uh, felt at that point. And I still think that it was a very how to say, a very brave appointment. And for most of the fall, I could even agree that I think his playing style, I was not so on board with it because while they played good, usually for 60 minutes, at the end, they usually shut up shop, which is not the last way. And maybe threw away some points because of that. That I understand. However, I also understood that especially once they beat Sturm Graz on Easter Sunday, when I was there, I, I, I was there. How? With his passion, he went to every single player and hugged, hugged, hugged him. And at that point, they had played a great cup game that they lost. They had a, they came back greatly against Sturm Graz. And I think towards the end of, of the season, Lask actually played really, really, really well. No, not the super high pressing, chase everyone down uh, type of football, but actually, uh, Offensive, but in a good way. There were some patterns of play there. I really thought that there was uh, there was something go, uh, building there. That if you could continue this momentum, I think you have some something, and you have the players for it. Uh, the squad got, uh, depth got better. I really, really, really have 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 to say I thought that he did a really good job there. He stabilized the team and he brought them back. And finishing third for Lusk is not something uh, that should be taken for easy. So yeah, letting him go and a squad that actually, I think, very much fits his personality, I don't quite understand. I really think that he uh, that the team uh, took a step forward, a really, really big step forward. And what I'm afraid of is that uh, the reason why they got into trouble last season is because everyone knew how Lask is going to play and that it's, hard, it's rather tough, but uh, people got adapted, found their way. 
I don't want to go back to that. I want that we become a little bit more unpredictable. Now, uh, the reason for his sacking officially is that um, there were differences in, in opinion on how the squad should be uh, set up for the next season. I, I am not so 100% if I actually quite buy that one. I mean, you have to take uh, their word for it. However, I think there are two other reasons. I think uh, one hears that, yeah, there's a little bit more defensive approach. As I said, this was mostly in the fall and maybe, uh, you know, in the main season. I really think that in the championship round, I didn't see much of that any, any, anymore. They actually played really, really well and actually going forward as well. Uh, so I don't quite get that. Um, and then the other one, and probably that's the big one, is that during the training camp in a test match, uh, I was a Rafal, for, I think from a Polish team, and he went wacko using some, uh, you know, ethnic slurs, whatever. Um, that unfortunately this game was broadcast and you could hear it very, very clearly, uh, and sponsors didn't take well to that. I think this is the reason why he had to go. Uh, take of it while the ones he did apologize afterwards, but I also, I, I, there was a feeling that something was not quite right. Uh, when you go to the interviews, uh, you know, he was always there, but uh, at late, I always felt that he was defending uh, he's worked a little bit too much for my liking, uh, kind of building a case for himself. And this is what you have to be now careful in the modern world. Whenever there's someone in danger of being sacked, there's usually some rhetoric uh, boosting uh, themselves. And yeah, it's just... <sighs> Honestly, good work. He did a really good job. And for that, I want to actually thank him. Uh, I'm a, I'm a little bit worried of going going forward. I'm not necessarily sad to see him go, although I actually found some sim sympathy for him. He has a way of making himself quite li likable unless you're his opponent. Letting such a coach go is not good. I, he is definitely with the Austrian Bundesliga one of the top coaches. And I don't quite uh, know whether this will get better or worse now. I really hope for the latter. I mean, going back to a uh, more uh, non-relenting style, that might be fun. That might be interesting. Um, I also saw one one thing that I can fall for. for. He already started to complain about uh, that, you know, now that we play in Europe, we need a deeper squad because, uh, you know, we have to play, it's called Doppelbelastung, so a uh, double burden in a way on you. And when Lask stands was always, it's a double reward that you can play. And this was something that already annoyed me when he was uh, coached Ra Rapid. Rapid was always complaining that it's not going their way because they have to play so, so many games. Maybe this was also one thing where I could see that, yeah, maybe the squad planning in that sense did not work well. But be it as it may, I don't under understand this club. I don't understand this club, honestly. I really don't. Because if really these racial, uh, I, I, it's not your ethnic slurs were the reason for his sacking, you should have sacked him sooner. I just remain on that. In any case, I'm ending the season for Austria right here with and I hope for for the best. My favorite is that now we have uh, Sageda as a who is from the same town, little 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 town as Oliver Glasner. Now that we have him as the coach, we are setting the scene for the return of Oliver Glasner. I would love it. I don't see it. I really really don't see it. And with that, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!